I win. Reload. Fine, you get that one, but you were lucky. Reload. Just call me the comeback kid. Reload. C -c -c killer combo. Two game winning streak. Hello, Internet! Welcome to Game Theory, where today we're showing you how to win the battle before it even begins using psychological cheat codes. Kind of like the Konami code. Up, up, down, down, left brain, right brain, left brain, right brain, start. Hey, remember that time we talked about Team Fortress 2 or League of Legends? No? You're only here for the FNAF theories? Wow. Uh, okay then. <laughs> Well, today I'm thrilled because I've wanted to do a theory on those games for a long time, and today is that day. Just how long, you ask? Doesn't matter, I just kind of put it in the script so it would flow better. So I've had a lot of requests to do a theory on those games, and the mind-blowing, super exciting, rock-your-socks-off subject that we're gonna be talking about today is... Drumroll, please! Colors! We're going to be talking about colors. What, that doesn't sound exciting enough for you? Hey, listen, not every theory is about the main character being dead and or evil and or his own father, okay? And besides, this is one you actually might find helpful as you're playing games with your friends. Because what if I told you that in competitive multiplayer games, whether they're FPS games like TF2, Halo, or COD, or MOBAs like League of Legends, Smite, Dota, or Heroes of the Storm, despite the mechanics for team battles being pretty much identical for both sides, there is an inherent unbalance that exists. Hard to believe, right? These games are built on being as balanced as possible, ensuring that winning and losing is based on player skill, strategy, and reflexes rather than simply exploiting some unfair advantage of the game. And with these esports games, with literally millions of dollars in prize money on the line, you would hope that it would be fair, right? But what if I told you it wasn't, and that it was through no fault of the game designers, that your chances of winning or losing the match are partially determined before even being dropped into the fields of justice. The true reason behind it all is, you guessed it, colors. They don't sound so lame now, do they? Let me explain. The relationship between colors and competitions goes back a long way. When you think of competitions between people or teams or anything, really, you usually think of each team as having a color. Like, when you think chess, you think of a black side fighting against a white side. And no, not those black and white sides, USJWs. They're just the two most common colors for chess pieces, okay? Uh, that said though, chess is a white supremacist game, as the white side actually has the statistical advantage over the black side, hashtag chess racism. That said, the unbalance that exists in most video games is different from chess racism. The white side in chess is favored because it moves first, but in competitive multiplayer games, everyone's dropped into the field at the same time, so that first mover advantage doesn't really apply. No, it actually has to do with your team's color. It's common that in most competitive team games, team colors are red and blue, unless of course you're playing Splatoon and it's hot magenta and electric yellow. Now, I know we're all rationally minded theorists who don't believe in superstition and magic, but I also know that when given the choice between two colors, everyone has a preference. Well, believe it or not, your team color actually has a significant impact on your chances of winning or losing. Let me hit you with some stats. In 2008, there was a study published in the Journal of Cyber Psychology and Behavior, which, besides sounding like a magazine from Battlestar Galactica, also analyzed data from 1,347 matches of the classic Red vs. Blue video game, Unreal Tournament 2004. All of the games were team deathmatch, where the team with the most kills was the winner, and they were all played by evenly matched players, so that the skill level of the players involved would have as little impact as possible on the end result of the study. After three months, the results were undeniable. Red teams were consistently winning 54.9% of the time over the blue competitors. That's a 55-45 split in a game that should look 50-50. 
That's crazy! And sure, it may seem like a small margin, but the conclusion that they reached was that this color differential actually mattered most when the two teams were equally matched for skill. Think about the implications for tournament play, where every team is the top of their field. This is a definitive difference. We're gamers, and we want every statistical advantage possible. So if I were to whip out my 1.1 gigahertz Hewlett Packard desktop PC and load up some Unreal today, you can bet. I'd probably be waiting in a matchmaking lobby for a while since not many other people are playing the game today. But if they were, you can bet your life that I'd want to be on that red team like white on rice. Or red on my team's banner. You get the idea. And this trend isn't exclusive to Unreal tournaments. Another more recent study by the website The Skeptical Statistician looked at the rich stats, who chooses not to mingle with the poor stats, provided by Halo 4, and saw that after 30 total Team Slayer matches, red won 21 times, while blue only won 9. Granted, the sample size is much, much smaller, so maybe sprinkle a grain of salt or two in there, but that's a huge deviation based purely on team color, in a game where color shouldn't matter matter at all. And it's not just in video games. In a 2011 article by the Association for Psychological Science, researchers analyzed the results of the 2004 Olympics in Athens, Greece, and discovered that across the board, athletes wearing red performed far better than athletes wearing blue, especially in aggressive hand-to-hand -hand events like boxing and wrestling. And in a similar study about Taekwondo, 42 referees were shown two sets of videos of red and blue opponents sparring, and then were asked to award them points based on their performance. Now get this, the second set of videos was identical to the first, except that the colors of the fighters were digitally reversed, so that the fighter wearing blue before was then wearing red and vice versa. In both cases, the fighter in red was awarded an average of 13% more points than the fighter in blue. Is that not totally insane? It's almost exactly like the games, but in real life. So should we all start Start boycotting blue teams now? Returning to tournament hosts and demanding recounts? Well, maybe it's not as bad as all that. Let's take a look at MOBAs, the most popular MOBA in the world, in fact, League of Legends. And hey, that's statistically speaking, don't be giving me a hard time making judgment calls on that one. In a study last year for the Daily Dot, with a sample size of 224 games, the team with 34 wins over the other was... Wait, the blue team? And. Why buy so much? As the article points out, that's like the blue team winning four games for every three games that the red team does. So we need some more statistics here. Well, another prime example came in the 2014 North American Summer Playoffs, where the blue side had a 79.3% win rate over the red side. That's enormous! So what's actually happening in the games? Taking our League of Legends example, aside from kills and capture points, there's also a handful of second objectives that can grant your team various resource advantages and buffs. At the time of our example where blue teams dominated, blue players in the study tended to go straight for the red team's defensive towers early game, where the red teams by and large went jungling. At that time in the game's evolution, killing jungle monsters gave resources in the form of gold, but didn't directly impact the player's abilities. Taking down towers also gave gold, but unlike jungling, also served to weaken the area they stood in for the red team team, which helped blue team during the more crucial late game. But why blue over red in league, but then red over blue in FPS? Well, the problem isn't the game. It's us. It's actually a lingering quirk in our psychology left over from evolution. Neuroscientist Gerald D. Kralik spearheaded a study at Dartmouth to investigate the effects of various colors on the psyche of primates. Male and female experimenters approached the monkeys in pairs, wearing various combinations of solid red, green, and blue color shirts and hats, and then would simultaneously present apple slices before backing away. They then record which apple slice the monkey would choose. As you may have guessed from the way I decided to to include the results in this video, the results were mind-blowing. The monkeys responded exactly the same across the board regardless of practically any variable. The experimenter being male or female had no effect on the choice of apple slice, nor did the experimenters wearing the color green, or even the experimenters wearing the color blue. However, in almost every case, definitively the person wearing red was totally avoided, which according to the researchers indicates that primates and humans avoid the color red. 
red. We view it as aggressive, which stems from an evolutionary adaptation where we perceive it as being stronger and more dangerous than other colors. That's why stop signs work so well, because they elicit a primary fear response, at least outside of California. And apparently Arkansas too, if Gaijin Goomba's Twitter account is to be believed. Primates, including humans, take a lot of cues from what we see around us. Looking at the redness of someone's skin, their lips, or even their, uh, uh cover your ears, kids and nuns, their dingleberries, can inspire all kinds of aggressive and submissive actions in us, because in the past we didn't have language and context to do that work for us. Red was the color of blood. It meant intense emotion. It meant danger, and it meant power. And according to the scientists at Dartmouth, this effect is absolutely strong enough to affect competitions, even to this day. So much so that following their primate study, they issued a warning for anyone holding a competition that this color can actually be used, quote, in ways that may unfairly influence people, end quote. Basically, it's easier to win if you wear red because it makes you subconsciously more aggressive and it makes your opponents subconsciously more afraid of you, and there's nothing really that we can do about it. It's in our evolutionary background. So that investigation goes a long way to explain the results in Unreal, Team Fortress, Halo, but it leaves some big holes, especially when it comes to all the opposite evidence coming from League of Legends. Why don't red teams win there? Surprise, surprise, more evolutionary psychology. In another study from the University of British Columbia, 600 subjects were asked to perform cognitive tasks on screens that were either red, blue, or white. What they found was that while red heightened our alertness, focus, and attention, blue instead encouraged people to be creative, think long-term, and relax. That's because instead of blood and sex, blue makes us think of the sky, cool, still water, natural elements in the world around us. In the League of Legends example, while the red team was racking up kills against giant savage beasts in the jungle for immediate rewards, the blue team tended to look more long-term. Their strategy was based on thinking ahead and strategically weighing which attack points would be most rewarding early and then also later on in the game. Theirs was a style of gameplay based around cool-headed strategy and an active resistance to the temptation of running into the jungle for some aggressive, fast burn wins. But you know what? It doesn't end there. Because the influence of color not only affects your gaming, but literally everything that you do in the world. And that includes everything that you buy. In advertising, the color red has much the same impact on your brain as it does in the context of the game. Red triggers urgency, focus, fast decision making, otherwise known as impulse buying. Ever notice that almost all clearance racks are labeled with red signs? The red sign is telling you to buy this now because otherwise it's gonna be gone. Focusing your instinctual attention and telling you to act now, think later. Blue, on the other hand, triggers our creativity and long-term planning. In the real world, advertising Advertisers sometimes use blue in stores designed for shoppers on a budget or bulk purchases. They want to appeal to shoppers who need to be strategic about their shopping to make sure that they walk out feeling comfortable with what they just got and what they spent on it. Think of Target versus Walmart, two huge box store chains. Target is all red and tends to be the higher end of the two stores. It's pitching to people who can spend a bit more and impulse shop a bit. But Walmart works the opposite way with blue rollback signs greeting you at the door, larger bulk purchases, all things telling you that you can feel comfortable exploring the store, calmly filling your cart. Each model is designed in its own way to make its customers want the products they're buying and then come back for more. And it works, whether we realize it or not. And it's not just advertisers who understand this principle. Cities in some countries with higher suicide rates, like Japan or the Nordic countries that are all dark with winters that are really long, have started to use blue tinted light in public places as subtle ways to make people feel calmer, reduce crime, and bring down suicide rates. Some airports use blue light pods to help people adjust to jet lag because the blue light makes your head feel clearer and helps you stay more awake. Ever wonder why you're able to stay awake and clear headed longer when you look at your phone or tablet in bed? All your mobile devices emit light in the blue spectrum. The effect even works if you're blind because the light receptors that sense it have nothing to do with vision. Red light, on the other hand, has effects all of its own that science is beginning to understand. According to NASA,
NASA, devices they've been testing that emit light far into the red spectrum can actually help your cells heal 200 times faster than they do in full spectrum light. It's almost like magic. So the next time you enter a round of serious competitive gaming, or even just that casual weekend unreal competition on that old gateway desktop with the cow print on it, make sure that you're choosing your side carefully. It might make all the difference. Playing a strategy game in Insist on blue, playing a high action aggression based shooter, red all the way. Knowing how to use the power of color to your advantage is serious business. Or if nothing else, I just gave you a new excuse for losing other than lag. But hey, that's just a theory. A game theory. Thanks for watching. Using color to optimize your life is one strategy, but over the last few weeks I've been learning a lot from the mastermind behind Minecraft, Notch. <laughs> Not from talking to him, mind you, heck no. Oh, I wish, that would be so cool. No, from his biography, Minecraft, the unlikely tale of Marcus Notch Pearson and the game that changed everything. Sure, the title is absurdly long, like seriously, pick a title and just stay with it, but from listening to it I've heard a lot of details about his early career and the aftermath of Minecraft's success that have really inspired me personally, and also things I've never seen written about online. You can find this and over 180,000 other titles to download from audible.com. If the book sounds interesting to you, or if you're just a fan of game theory and want to help support the show, go to audible.com slash matpat, M-A-T-P-A-T, and get yourself a free book while helping us deliver more videos to you guys watching. I've even included a link in the description for you to click, so a free book and supporting us? To get yourself more videos? <laughs> not bad. Really, it's super easy. There's no excuses not to. You know what else I'm listening to? Paper Towns by Nerdfighter John Green, because he's a fellow YouTube creator that I want to support. See, I do this kind of thing too, you know. And since this movie is going to come out soon, and I just so happen to have a film channel I launched a couple weeks ago, might be good to get familiar with that. Anyway, Notch's biography and John Green's personal story too, both have themes of doing something that matters with your life. And honestly, I think that's a message that can apply to us all, so I think they're both worth checking out. Remember, that's audible.com slash matpat. Remember, your support makes all the difference. Now, if you'll excuse me, there are some scantily clad women that need some deep researching if you catch my drift, which is exactly what I just said. Some scantily clad women need to be researched for scientific purposes.